So it looks like you made it to the end of either the Bitsy tutorial series or the Twine tutorial series. So awesome job getting through those, whether you watched them all or you just clicked around and found what was useful to you and left the rest behind. Either way to do it is totally fine. Um, it's just awesome that you tried to pick up some new skills and learn game development, which can be very difficult for people um, who've never done it before. So awesome job. Uh, so as you may have gathered, I made the same game in two different platforms. I made a game on Samurai Debt called Death and Taxes, Debt and the Tokugawa Samurai, um, and I made one version in Bitsy and one version in Twine. So um, it definitely was very challenging making the same game in two different tools that were designed for different things and have different strengths and weaknesses. So in this video, my aim is to teach you about sort of my experience with both tools, what I think each tool is really good for, what I think each tool is maybe not so good for, and try to help you make an informed decision about which tool you want to use to make whatever game that you're going to make. Um, so my assumption is still that these um, videos are aimed at students who are making a historical video game for a classroom assignment, but hopefully this will also be a useful video for anyone who is interested in getting into game development, um, who maybe wants to use a uh, an easier, more accessible tool like Bitsy or Twine, and you're trying to figure out which one you want to go with. So um, why don't we get started? I'm going to skip around a little bit in between both of these games, but um, if you'd like to play either of them, I'll have them linked in the description, or you can find them on my itch.io page. Um, so they'll both be right here. Um, but let's start with the Twine game, um, and I'll just kind of show you how this runs in the browser first. So I think one immediate pro to this is that you can see so much text on the screen um, and you can incorporate historical images in Twine. So I think Twine definitely, um, as I guess would be pretty obvious for anyone who's interacted with Twine at all, Twine definitely has the advantage in terms of text-based games. Twine is made for branching stories. So um, obviously you can make a story that plays like a game, which is what lots of people use Twine for, but its emphasis is definitely on the writing. So games that have a lot of text are going to be presented a little bit better in Twine than in Bitsy. So for example, um, we've just gone through basically the info dump, uh, like historical background part of the game. And I have this both games. Um, and let me show you what it looks like in Bitsy. So if I just navigate down and I run this game, um, Obviously, Bitsy is more visually interesting, um, at least to me, I think it is, because you have a lot more control over the colors, and I just love the 8-bit style. Like, um, the 8-bit was definitely before my time. I grew up on, like, the Nintendo 64, so I was uh, a little kid in the area of the 64-bit games and, like, the first 3D games, so um, this is before my time, but it's still charming to every generation, I think. But, um, yeah, so I had to do basically the historical background info dump. I had to force players to walk through and interact with these items to get the historical background, and so little of it is shown in the text box, um, and you have to do an awful lot of clicking to get through it all. Um, so I don't think that if you're doing a really like story-driven game or a text-driven game, I definitely I don't think I would go with Bitsy. I think Bitsy is a lot stronger for visual games. Um, but one thing I do like about it is that you can isolate different parts of the text and make them fun colors and have fun text effects, which you saw in an earlier video. Um, but as you can see, it just takes a really long time to get through um, what is not an incredible amount of text. Um, so, well, I mean, it's it's this, um, and then that, and then that. But that's like, that's three paragraphs. Um, you can skim that really quickly if you're doing it in like a classroom reading but it just takes just a sort of silly amount of time to get through it all in here. Um, and then you get through that one info dump and you're like, ah, oh, shoot, there's two more. Are they gonna be the same length? So um, it was definitely a little like frustrating that I couldn't figure out a better way to get this information to you in Bitsy. And I think ultimately this game design um, is not well suited to the platform. I think Bitsy is definitely a lot more fun um, if you're doing a lot more visual storytelling. Um, let me just click through this. So, okay. So I just did like a very simple, like kind of castle-y design, but it's not really like reminiscent of samurai castles or, or like the house that the Lord would be in, um, or anything like that. And then like, this is just kind of a generic room. And I basically like designed the spaces to funnel you through the same choices that I was able to make in Twine. Um, and what I think 
is really good in Bitsy and what most people who are making games in Bitsy should do is you should do a lot more visual storytelling. Like our little character guy here is so cute and you can make such interesting little sprites and items to interact with. It's so much more fun when you can walk around a world in Bitsy and interact with things and follow a story more like you would in maybe an RPG kind of setting. Um, so I think the game that I made definitely was not well suited to Bitsy. And I think also on the back end, um, Another thing that I didn't love about it, here let me show you, um, this is like what the dialogue looks like. Um, it's just kind of a wall of text and it's it's difficult to even notice like where are the little bits where I inserted code um, because it's it's just not formatted very well. Like it's, um, here I'll, I'll show you the alternative. So let me show you, um, okay, so this is where I have more of my like if statements and conditionals and things like that. Um, but let me show you what it looks like in Twine, because it's very different. This is so much easier to read. And I know, like, if you've never done coding before, this is also going to look intimidating, no matter which platform I show you. But, like, look, there's colors! <laughs> and it, it helps you see, like, if I take this out, everything changes. It, it just helps you along with the coding process, because as visual indicators of if your code is formatted correctly or not, um, like, your variables are a different color than setting your variables, then um, your if statements, um, the linking to different passages is a different color, um, and then you can like actually press enter and format these uh, in ways that make sense to you visually, like as the programmer as well. Whereas in Bitsy, as we just saw, it's kind of just this wall of text, and if you insert, uh, like, if I, um, if I did this kind of thing to make it easier for me as the programmer to like space out my work and see what's going on, this like messes up the format of your story and inserts like a lot of unnecessary spaces um, when when you're actually playing the game and interacting with stuff. And it does that in Twine as well, but it's not like as bad, I don't think. Uh, and I think there's a way to write your code. So like I put code at the end of big chunks of dialogue to kind of avoid that. Um, so yeah, so I think, I think overall um, coding in Twine is a little bit easier. And I think even though coding in both of them um, is a little bit on the more on the difficult side, uh, and it's one of the more difficult things you do in each tool, I think Twine does a lot better job handling it than Bitsy. Um, but I, again, I think with Twine, like maybe I did a little bit more complicated of a game than I should have done. I think maybe I tried to have too many variables and too many options, and I think if I had done something um, that read more like um, something that read more like this every time. Like if I really had just focused on writing really good solid narrative um, and had the player um, make like one or two choices each time instead of choosing between a whole host of options, I think that is something that Twine does really well. Um, and I think maybe the way that I structured my game is not the like, it's not the best way to use Twine. You can use Twine to do that um, and part of what I was trying to do was make a game that kind of pushed the limits of each tool just to see like what it could handle. Um, but I definitely don't think I played into either tool's strong points, and I think that's something that you definitely want to consider when you're making a game. I think in summary, I would say that Bitsy is much better for um, visually interesting games um, if you want to do a lot of visual storytelling, um, which basically just means creating like a beautiful world filled with lots of things. Um, so like, like, like this, it doesn't necessarily, like these all kind of look like symbols that are representing something and it doesn't look like they actually belong in this world. Um, whereas I've made a different game that did do a lot of visual storytelling, which I can show you um, as an example of something I think Bitsy does well that, um, that you can do as well. So I tried to make this game, um, which is about mental health, I tried to use like, I completely relied on visual storytelling. Like, I created a one-bedroom apartment, um, I made lots of little items um, that you can interact with kind of spread out around your house, but it would be unclear what any of these little symbols were by themselves, but they become clear within the context of, oh, this is a kitchen, so this must be a refrigerator, and this must be either a slice of cake or a pizza or something like that. Um, here's the bathroom. This little bit um, is a different color than the rest, which means I can interact with it. Uh, I bet if I go in here, I could take a shower. Um, 
or here's what looks like a little flower next to a desk. I bet that probably is a plant or a flower. Um, so this is what I mean by visual storytelling. Um, you can tell a lot about this character and our situation by the way it looks. Like the shoulders are heaving, um, so this person is probably pretty stressed, which is what the game's about. Um, you wake up during an anxiety attack, um, and then you can tell that they live alone and they have a little cat. Um, and uh, yeah, you can just make a lot of inferences about this person and their situation based on the world that I've created. So that's, that's how I think that you should use Bitsy. I think you should use Bitsy if you want to tell a, mo a much more visual game. I think you should use Twine if you want to tell um, a more text-driven game. Because yeah, this, this plays totally differently in here than it does in Bitsy, where you're just getting a little chunk of this text every time, and you have to click constantly to get through it all. Um, I do think making the choices, because um, in both the Bitsy game and the Twine game, I have the same choices and they have the same effect, um, and it was much easier to code in Twine. Um, even though it was my first time coding it, I think um, it was just a little bit easier for me because of the visual coding aids. But also as a player, like making these choices is a little bit easier here than in Bitsy, because in Bitsy you have to like go through the info dump and then you have to like click, you have to walk through each of these um, just to see what they even are, and then you have to walk through them again to try and make the decision. And then if you get through these, so let me just um, click on this and get through it for you. So I'm just speed clicking through that. So that's how you have to fight, figure out even what these are, as you can't really tell what they are until you interact with them, and then it tells you. And then if you want to do it a second time, um, then you can, and then this would be great if it stayed like this the whole time, um, and then when you hit the next month, um, you could see what choices you've already made. But the way I had to structure it, and I don't know if this is the right way, but this is the way I had to do it as someone learning Bitsy. Um, I had to basically just remake the first room. Um, and let me skip through this. And then if you go through this, like, you can't make that decision again, but it kind of looks like you can, so I, it's a little confusing. I just think it's imperfect, um, whereas with Twine, um, so sell some belongings, you make it to the next month, and now that option's gone. So I think it's just a little bit clearer in Twine. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I think overall t Bitsy is better if you're going to make a visual game, Twine is better if you're going to make a text-heavy game, um, but both options are, I think, fairly easy to learn and fairly accessible, and I think if you make a game that is much smaller in scope than mine, I think they're both really great tools, and I think they're very powerful for how easy they are to pick up. So um, yeah, just think about what kind of game you want to make and which tool is going to best serve you and your purposes. But I think whichever one you pick, you're going to make a really interesting and fun game. So I hope this series was helpful to you. Definitely give it another watch if you need refreshers on anything. Um, and remember that you can always Google stuff that you don't know. Um, there's no shame in, in Googling what is a variable. Um, I've done that many times. So yeah, good luck with your game development, and I hope no matter which tool you use, Bitsy or Twine, that you make a game that you're very proud of.